My name is Carl Sverd, and I hold a senior scientist position that is funded by the Swedish Research Council and is positioned here at Lund University. The research group is called Cellular Biomechanics and um, we work with primarily with a membrane organelle that is called caveola. There are tiny structures in the cell membrane. They're particularly abundant in fat cells and in all cells of the cardiovascular system and in skeletal muscle. A number of patients that lack caveola entirely were identified and these individuals they also lack fat essentially from birth. Uh, they have a muscle ache because they have a muscular dystrophy and they typically die in their teens from cardio, cardiac dysrhythmia. So this is a very severe condition. These are typically very slim individuals. So, I mean, I've seen photographs and they, they look quite muscular and, uh, and with very defined muscles, of course, because they have very little fat. Um, so they may appear healthy, but they're not. Complete lack of caveolis likely to be extremely rare, extremely rare. But individuals might have much more subtle changes in these genes that affect the function of caveol and in a much milder way. And this is something that we would like to find out as well. So we have, for example, screened a large number of individuals <coughs> in Malmö to, um, in collaboration with with, with the, um, Professor Ola Melando, in order to be able to see if there are more common genetic variants in these genes that correlate with important cardiovascular traits. And another screen identified caveolin 1, or a, a polymorphism between the caveolin 1 and caveolin 2 gene as the primary genetic reason for primary open angle glaucoma, which is the second leading cause of blindness in the world. So what possibilities do you see opening up if caveole are properly investigated? I think th there is a good chance to better understand important human diseases. And uh, I think it's too early to say that, that we will be able to treat diseases or or anything like that, but I think the field so far has been a very good example of uh, how basic science can actually lead to understanding of human disease. And it is my hope that it will continue to be so and there will be more exciting developments in the field.